able, please yeah. stand and join us to sing We Believe in Forever. And it's cold and raining.
Good morning. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful to be here today. We thank for your wonderful blessings of this past week. The wonderful love that you bestowed upon us. The wonderful opportunities that you have given us to be here today. And Lord, as we have this service today, let everything that we have focus on you. The singing of the hymns, the special music, the reading of your holy word. Let everything be soaked on you. The proclamation of your message. Now Lord, we just ask now that you be with us. Watch over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're glad that you are here tonight. As I said, and hope that this will not be your last time if you are visiting with us. Again, we're excited about it. And uh, if you're visiting, we'd especially like to have you. And for our folks that are here, our people, if we're going to have a time of greeting our visitors, please let them know that you are glad that they are here. We've got a lot of announcements and a lot of scheduling to do, so I'll try to go through these as well as I can. This afternoon at 4.30 will be a youth council meeting. If you're a part of that, please come to be a part of it. We'll be making plans for the next area here, probably about the next quarter, so be in prayer for that. Then remember our evening service, we'll continue our study on Luke. And then immediately following the service, and this is for the men, we're going to have a men's choir rehearsal. Our men are going to be doing a special Baptist Men's Day on the 17th of February. And they're rehearsing tonight on a song. They already had one rehearsal. And so we're looking forward to that. So men, if you can sing or if you can't sing, either way, we'd love to have you. Tonight, immediately following our evening service up here in the sanctuary. So come be a part of that and work with us on that. Also, there will be a Sunday school meeting, not this Tuesday, but the Tuesday the 22nd of teachers and officers, and that'll be discussed class projects for the coming year. So please note that. Also remember our offering envelopes are available in the foyer, and so please remember to get those as well. Also, as mentioned this morning, they're having a special time, prayer time for Tammany Lockamy at her home. And so it's at 3 o'clock this afternoon. They're asking all of you to come. Tammy's got terminal cancer, and they requested prayer at the home, so if you can be a part of that, 3 o'clock this afternoon. So please remember her and her family in your prayers at this time. Again, we're glad you're here. We're going to talk about we have a story to tell to the nation. Let us stand and sing hymn number 586.
Greet your friends, neighbors. Let them know you're glad they're here, especially our visitors. How's everybody? How's everybody doing? Hey, Nancy, you okay, everybody, come on. My goodness, it's good to see you. You got something new at your house, don't you? What have you got? A baby. A baby. <gasps> Are you like that little baby? Uh-huh. Okay, this morning we're going to talk about Cuba. Let's see if we can find it on our globe. This is where Chelsea's going to go. She is going to go, and she's going to go be a, a missionary over there for a week, and it's right here. You see that yellow spot right there? Mm. Now, we're up here in this little pink spot. But it's still a long way from us. And this country is not a Christian country like ours is. So we have to remember that. So as she goes over there, we want to pray for her that she's safe and that she's able to spread the word of God and she's able to come back home, don't we? So this morning we're taking a love offering after Sunday after preaching this morning for her, okay? So let's have our prayer, okay? Dear Lord, thank you for the day that you've given us. Dear Lord, we ask that you bless us often and help Chelsea as she goes over there and she witnesses for you, dear Lord. We ask that you keep her safe, and we ask that you get her return safe back home, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we ask you to be with Pastor Strickland this morning. He delivers our message, and he will tell us something that we can go back and tell someone else today. And dear Lord, we ask that you forgive us all of our many sins. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay. As Cindy mentioned, we will be taking a love offering at the end of services for Chesley Brewington. We'll be going to Cuba, so be in prayer for her, and especially be in prayer for this country as well. Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 591. Let us stand, please. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just so thankful to be in your house this morning to worship you. 
We ask that you bless the pastor this morning as the message he has for us, Lord. Now as we uh, accept these tithes and offerings, I pray that you will bless the gifts that we're about to receive for the ongoing of your kingdom. In your name we do pray and ask. Amen. Thank you. Yes, she does. Thank you, Ann, for that beautiful music. I'm glad you spoke, Boogie. You know, today is Boogie's birthday. Let's just wish him a happy birthday today. And the Boogie, you're 58, aren't you? 59, okay. And uh, so we just ha wish you a very happy birthday. And we grant... And granddaughter Brittany, I believe, has got a birthday the next day. And that, mine's on Tuesday. <laughs> well, we just wish all these folks a happy, happy birthday. Praise the Lord. Preacher Oliver Green said, I'm glad to be here. And I think we all are just glad to be here. At this time, Connor Pope is going to have our scripture and prayer. Come on down, Connor. Good morning. Good morning. Today's scripture will, will be from 1 Corinthians 3 9. If you are able to, please stand for the reading of God's Word. First Corinthians 3 9 says, For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. You may be seated. Thank you, Connor. And may God richly bless the reading and the hearing of the word this morning. We do come to the time of special prayer. And as we just mentioned, continue to remember Tammy Lockamy and the special prayer time for her. Continue to remember J.E. and Alma Coates. And also, Miranda Art will be having a catheterization tomorrow. So please remember those. Are there others that you would like to share with us at this time? 
Gloria Huff, that's Becky Taylor's sister. Billy Lee. Billy Lee. Yeah, Billy has not had a good week. Others? Linda Godwin. Linda Godwin. Others? Linda Cahoon. Uh, who? Robert Jernigan. Others? Dickie Pope. Dickie's here, but Dickie, you always use some prayer, isn't that right? <laughs> Doug Bullard. Our country, yes, very much so. Eddie Parker. Eddie Parker. Others? And again, remember Chesley, too. She'll be going. She's got a while, but she just needs a lot of prayer with the special conditions over in Cuba. So please remember Chesley. And all the ones will be going on that trip, I believe, is in March. Okay, others? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you on this day for opportunities so we can come into church and worship you. We thank you for blessing us with good food, good, good clothes, and good homes. <clears throat> thank you for opportunities so we can come together on this day to worship you and to learn more about you. Be with everyone that is going through hard times and be with everyone that's in the hospital. We are sinners that need to go to hell, but since that you sent, sent your son, we can repent, and we thank you for all you have done for us. In your precious name we pray, amen. amen. amen.
That'll get you going this morning, won't it? Thank you, choir. Thank you, Ann. I like to hear you tickle the ivories like that. She was talking about her arthritis a little earlier this morning. And I said, well, you don't like it slowed her down today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I like that. I enjoyed it. I tell you, you can just preach right away when you get fired up like that after a song, after a song like that one. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Miss Betsy. And thank you, Ann, for that beautiful program, The Sinner's Friend. It's one of the old favorites, but still a good song. I love to hear it. I could hear it over and over again two or three times. But if it's exciting, it's exciting. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we've been blessed this morning by the music, by the sinner's friend. And we know that you are, your son Jesus is the sinner's friend. This morning as we continue to talk about our business, let us look to see where we can help and what we can do to make this, we do your work here on this earth. Watch over us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, last Sunday we discussed the business of the church, our business. And we looked at Jesus, who was a 12-year-old child at this time, was sitting in the temple amazing the priests and the lawyers and the different ones of that day. You know, he'd been missing for three days. And after a frantic search by Mary and Joseph and other relatives, they found him at probably the least likely place, and that was in the temple. And Mary asked, why have you brought such sorrow to us by not returning? And Jesus said this question, wish ye not, I be about my father's business as he's telling me. I've got business. This is where I need to be, to be about the Father's business. You know, last week we looked at the time of the Father's business, that we sought to live and serve as a church. We examined two areas. We sought to live as far as we were mandated to reach the lost and to win the lost to Jesus Christ as commanded by the Great Commission. And then we were to grow in the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we grew in Bible knowledge, as we grew in Christian maturity, and mentoring others in our Christian and with their Christian walk. So today, we want to see what the Lord wants us to do as our church, a business of the church. You know, Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. The church at Corinth was being plagued by factions of all sorts. There was divisions, there was church problems. As you know, that beautiful love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13 was dealt with, a, with church problems. The motivation of love. But for people, it lined up with different groups. One of them was the Apollos group. One of them was the Paul group. And then there were two or three other groups. And Paul said this, that one watered and one planted, but that God gave the increase. And then he used this scripture that we say here. Well, we are laborers. We are workers together. With God. We are God's husbandry. We are God's building. In other words, our work is to work together with God. And we are to work with one another in what we do. You know what that says to me? There is no Lone Rangers. You know, Miss Cheryl, you got so she don't look at as much now. She's like to watch the Lone Ranger on, on the afternoons. It comes on FET TV. You know, and that theme and all going. It's usually the same one. Tonto gets beat up every time. Somebody that, he gets beat up more than the Lone Ranger does. But you know, it says this, return to the thrilling days of yesteryear, the Lone Ranger. But that doesn't work that way in the church. We're to work together. We're again to grow the church. We're to win the loss and to grow in the grace and the knowledge. And sometimes the problem is that we don't get on the Lord's time and the Lord's time basis. Sometimes we run ahead of the Lord. And sometimes we lag behind the Lord. We don't kind of get on where he is in his timing. That's a key point. It says we are laborers what? Together. With whom? With ourselves? With other church members? We are laborers together with God. We work under his plan. Under his commission. And under his means. So this morning, I want us to look at several other things. we probably do one more on, on this message. I've not done a lot of series preaching, but this one's kind of spoke to me. So I want us to look at this. What is our business? And this is the second part of it. First, we are to minister to those in need. You know, there's the physical support. 
You know, Jesus gave several instances in the Scripture. He tells us, I was hungry, and you fed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. And they said, Lord, when were you hungry? When were you sick? Lord, when were you in prison? And Jesus said, if you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. He also said that you did not do these things. And Jesus presented condemnation. You know, last Sunday we talked about the Good Samaritan. You know, said that this man was from Jericho to Jerusalem. Miss Shirley and I rode down that Jericho road, as the old song said. It's a hilly mountain road. And he said that thieves come. They robbed him. They beat him up. Took his money. Stripped him. Left him for dead. And you know what happened. First a priest came and he just walked right on by. He was too busy doing his church meetings, his programs, his activities, as we say it. And beside, he was running late. And they were expecting him to be there. I've heard folks say, well, I'm expected to be there. Yet a crowd was expecting the priest to be there. Well, he went on by. And then here come that old Levite. There again, he had a lot of church issues. They were dealing with a church conflict, and they had to have a meeting that night to solve that. And to work on that, and he he looked at the man. He said, well, poor fellow, I declare I wish I could help you, but I didn't bring any clean clothes or any change of clothes, and I'll get all messed up dealing with you. And besides, i got to help iron that problem out at the church. And then come that old despised half-breed Samaritan. That they all of the Jewish people hated the Samaritans. They'd go all around to have to avoid going through Samaria. And it said that he came. And that he cleaned and bound his wounds. He put him on his donkey. Carried him to the hotel. Paid for what happened there. And he said, if there's more money needed after he gets better, I'll pay that. And Jesus asked that penetrating question. Who is his neighbor? But well, they had asked that earlier, who was their neighbor? They thought only their neighbors the ones they knew. The neighbors were the ones that they thought that they knew just like they were. And they had to ask the one who helped him. And then Jesus gave this charge, go do thou likewise. Today he is telling us to go do thou likewise. People are hurting, people are hungry. You know, people have been displaced by Hurricane Florence. The wildfires in California, you list one need after another. People have been to place. People are hurting. And you know, we are laborers together. We have tasks to do. You know, one of the things I've enjoyed doing, and some of you, if you've never been to one, by all means come. There's one coming up in February. And that's how Baptist men rally. Let's call it Baptist on Mission because men and women both are involved in it. And it's just wonderful to hear all the places that our Baptist work has been throughout the world, through hurricane relief, through disaster relief, the Baptist disaster vans feeding thousands of people, running people through on a feeding inches, laundry, all the different things, not only here in North Carolina, but all over the country, wherever it is needed, they are going. And we are part of that work. And even here in our own church, we've done yard work, cleaning up, doing things. These things are helping to help our shut-ins. You know, we talked about the loss of Jesus Christ last Sunday. But before sometimes we can minister to the loss, we have to deal with physical needs. People that are hurting, people that are hungry, people that need just a hand, they need an encouragement. And we're commanded to do that. You know, Jesus tells us to give that cup of cold water in his name and we will be blessed. Yes, we do it through financially. We've given our Baptist children some three mission trips as we're getting ready to help Chesley out with it. Through our North Carolina missions, our local benevolence, the Beatitude House, through the Samaritan's Purse. You know, you not, may not be able to go on a mission trip, but you can give and you can pray for this. You know, one thing I've been glad about this church, and I think one reason the Lord has blessed this church through the years, is that it is a mission-minded church church and as long as we are a mission-minded church mean that we believe in going out beyond the doors and the walls of this church to reach the lost to feed the hungry to help the poor to help the impoverished to help those in need that the Lord will continue to bless us 
You know, we sung good old missionary hymns. Some of you ladies might have thought you were back in a missionary meeting this morning. We sung, we are story to tell to the nation and heart the voice of Jesus calling. So today, you know, Paul heard the Macedonian cry. Come over to Macedonia. Come over to help us today. We have the cry of people come and help us. Help us. And you know, he calls us to come in our Jerusalem, which is this area we have right here. Our Judea, which is probably our state, our region. Our Samaria, throughout our country and to the uttermost parts of the world. And I've seen us do that and I pray that we'll continue to have a mission mind because this again is a biblical mandate. And it's part of the business that we do as laborers together with God. That old hymn you just sung says, Heart the voice of Jesus calling. Who will go and work today? Fields are white and harvest waiting. Who will bear the sheaves away? Loud and long the master called. Rich rewards he offers free. Who will gladly answer saying, Here am I, send me, send me. Our prayer is that we will be willing to go. We'll be willing to pray. We'll be willing to do. Let that be about the business. But you know we're also to help others as well through moral support. You know there are many people that are hurting. In other words, we can give monetarily. We can do things, but we also need to let them care. Know they care. The old song says, does Jesus care? Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with thy grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. But also, we need to show that we care as well. We hear so much this bombarded in the news media lately that we sometimes grow indifferent to all the needs and the hurting of people around us. As a song over 50 years ago said, walk a mile in my shoes. Sometimes it's easy to find fault with other people. Sometimes it's easy to, listen, to judge people. But we need to show that we care. You know, if they're families, and show people care. You don't need to know all the details, but show people that you care if they're hurting. If a person's lost their job, help them financially, but also help them morally as well and encourage them. If a person has health issues, encourage them, pray for them. You know, Jesus had compassion. He had compassion on the lost. He had compassion on those that were sick and healing the sick. You know, the sharpest criticism that Jesus gave was to the organized religion, the so-called religious leaders of that day, who were so cold and hard and callous. They were more interested in all their procedures. They were more interested in their rituals and sacrifice than they were helping in need. You know, the Old Testament says to obey is better than sacrifice. In other words, to obey the Lord. As we said last week, we can have our meetings, our programs, and yes, these are necessary. I'm not knocking that. But on the other hand, we need to realize that we have a mandate to go and to help others. And we need a word of encouragement. You know, an old poem says, Christ has no hands but our hands to do his work today. He has no feet but our feet to speed them on the way. Today, let us be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ as we spread the message, as we minister to him, as we give that cup of cold water, as we do unto the least of these, my brethren. Again, this is what we do is labor us together with God. But secondly, we are to be instruments of God's love, and the two are, are related. Before we can tell others of Jesus Christ, before we can grow in the grace of Jesus Christ, and before we can help others, we have to be in love and have to show that love. Jesus said in God, John's Gospel, As the Father hath loved us, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. Stay in my love. Yes, and he told us that this is the business that we have is to love one another. This is my commandment in John 15, 12, that you love one another as I have loved you. You know, Paul tells their church, church that they are to walk in love. Everything we're to do, and that's the business of this church, is to be motivated by the love of Jesus Christ as we grow in grace, as we tell the lost, as we help those in need. You know, 1 Corinthians tells us this, the love of Christ constraineth us. The love of Christ motivates us. It's a good word to say. Better translation of this 2 Corinthians past. The love of Christ motivates us. You know, we can only shame people enough. We can only put people on a guilt trip enough. There has to be a permanent solution. 
And that solution is to be motivated by love. You know, Jesus was asked, what was the greatest commandment? And he told him, quoting from the Shema, the Old Testament in Deuteronomy, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy strength. Every part of their being you should love the Lord. But they probably didn't expect this second, last one. He said, and the second one is like unto it. And that is what? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as what? Thyself. You shall love your neighbor and say, you know, it's, oh, we can say we love the Lord. Oh, look at dear Lord, we love you. But you know, it's hard sometimes to love our neighbors. Did you know that? To love those. This is where it's put in, into action. And then we talked about being laborers together. We need to be laborers together in love with each other. In other words, we can do a whole lot of things. As, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, in that great love chapter, we can do many things, but if we don't have the love of God, it's worth nothing. We can do all wonderful works. We can do all wonderful activities, but we have to be, have the love of God and be motivated. In other words, one day, and put it in modern terms, the last committee meeting will be held. You say, well, hooray. And that love of God will still be there. The last Sunday school lesson will be taught. But the love of God will still be there. The last choir special will be sung. The love of God will still be there. And yes, probably you'll say amen to this. The last sermon will be preached. You know, there's not going to be any preaching in heaven. Did you know that? Some of you might say amen on that, wouldn't you? Don't be singing and praising, but there'll be no preaching in heaven. Because the preaching has already been done on the earth. But you know, in all these things will happen. But the love of God is still there. And that's what motivates us as labors together. Friends, today, as we do our, the king's business, as we are, as the old scripture says in 2 Corinthians, ambassadors for Christ, we are representatives. We need to be agents of love. It's, in other words, we need to have this bond of love. The psalm says we are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirit with the spirit of God. We are one in the bond of love. In other words, we may not always love each other's ways. We may not always agree. Life is short. But friends, we can walk in love and show love for one another. And we can show respect for one another. And to realize that God loved us enough to send his son to die in the world. And we can show that same love. As we go into a building program, let us love. As we go into a new year, let us love. As we do activities, yes, let us practice love. Let people show that you love them and appreciate what they do. Well, you know, we are laborers together with God. Yes, there are times as we reach out in this lost world that some people will not return our love. We've seen the wickedness dominating the hatred of this world. We've seen that things have wreaked havoc on our world. And every vestige of Christianity is trying to be destroyed. But these people need a caring hand too. We need to pray for them. We need to encourage them. And we need to do it even sometimes when we are cursed at, when we are rejected. In other words, that doesn't say we condone what they're doing. We don't. They're in sin and they eventually face judgment. But we still need to practice Christian love. You know, Jesus says if they reject you, Wipe the dust off your feet and minister to others. So this morning is the second part of this message. What is our business? We focused on this morning meeting others' needs. We focused on being motivated with these needs through the love of Jesus Christ. You know, and the scripture tells us again, for we are laborers together with God. We are God's husbandry. We are God's building. In other words, we are set aside to do his work. Laborers together. Yes, and laborers together with God. So my challenge for this year is we seek to do the Lord's business. Let us labor to do the Lord's work. Here in this church and out within the world as well. To represent Him and what He would have us do. And God's people said, Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are indeed laborers with you. We will labor us together with you. And that means that we work with you under your guidance through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. We don't do it on our own. We don't do our way and carry it, But we seek your will in whatever we do, Lord. This morning there may be those that need to make decisions. It may be a decision for membership. Accepting Jesus Christ as, your Lord and sa as our Lord and Savior. 
Lord, speak to them through the power of your Holy Spirit. Anoint them to the point that they make this decision. Or it may be a decision at church membership. Lord, we ask that you be with them on that as well. There may be other decisions that need to be made. Lord, help us to impress upon that we are laborers together with you. That we have people that are hurting. We have people in need in this world. And we need to minister. And we need to do it through the motivation of love through your soul, Son, Jesus Christ. Watch over us and we give you this invitation period. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The invitation hymn is more love to thee, O Christ. This is my earnest plea. More love to Christ of thee. More love to thee. This morning, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray and plead with you, this will be our decision, that you'll accept him as your Lord and Savior. And for those that are contemplating moving their membership, we'd certainly love to have you by letter, by statement, to come to be a part of our church and to be a part of its ministries. Or maybe this message, to help the needy, to help those, will speak to you. Our invitation hymn is... Number 473. Let us stand, please. be our prayer. This shall my prayer, this prayer shall be. More love to thee. More love to thee. I'm going to ask our ushers to get in place and we'll be receiving off of someone at this door, at that door and it'll be towards Chesley Brewington and her trip to Cuba. Be doing it in prayer and to receive that. So as soon as we have the benediction we're going to have people placed at different locations for that. The Lord has been good to us, and I'm glad you're here today and hope that again, as I've said earlier, that it's been good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful to be here. We're thankful for this wonderful time that you have given us. And now, Lord, as we leave this place, give us traveling mercies. Watch over us in your precious Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen.